Today's victim, Retina 3C, small c. What's it do? Oh, the meter goes. That's always a bonus. Focus. Unusually loose. Means that um, probably all the grease is dried right out and it's gone so hard that there's nothing happening there at all. The lens doesn't look wonderful. There's some haze in there. I think it's on one of the internal surfaces, so that's going to need a bit of cleaning. The condition of the camera itself, well cosmetically, you know, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look like it's done a lot of work. Usual mark down the accessory shoe where someone's poked in an electronic flash with a hot shoe contact. That's uh, pretty much inescapable. The viewfinder, well the rear glass is dirty as. The rangefinder does work. Pretty hazy. The shutter. What's it do? Oh, that releases as I let the film advance swing back. Oh, very slow. Look, that take note. Watch the clever way those blades return to the rest position. Oh, look, that time it, it, I didn't even have to push the shutter button. It didn't cock. Those blades are very oily. You can see the oil on the blades there. Yeah, not even closing. Very nasty. So, okay, so the shutter certainly needs to be serviced. That's really sticky. The film advanced, there was nothing particularly noticeable about that. Rangefinder, obviously filthy. Lens was dirty. Focus was unusually loose. Should be a straightforward one. I better start pulling it down. Well, I might as well start by removing the lens and shutter assembly. Got a good tool here, one that I was given years ago by a fellow retina repair enthusiast. He'd had a local contact make one for him, somebody who was somewhat more skilled with load work than I am and uh, he got him to make two, sent me one it's been great particularly good on the Retina 3C it has sufficient clearance in here for the rear lens group it slides on there a little bit easier than the, the other one that I've got that uh, Belgian tool we'll just fish out the retaining ring and I will pop that lens. Yeah, that rear group looks particularly dirty. Pop that lens and shutter assembly away to one side. With that out of the way, let's have the top off this camera, I think. A few bumps on that leatherette on the back. I feel that's going to want to come off. Something through the forks of the rewind. Just spin that off with my fingers. And I want a couple of plastic containers. I have these plastic containers handy. They're from the tops of um, cotton bud containers. And I go through loads of cotton buds. Q-tips. Those for the lids off them. What am I looking for? The tool that will take that rewind button apart. Rewind knob. Most of that, of course, doesn't go through the cleaner because that wouldn't do the do them any good. But I do use it to take the spring out of there, and I'd like to take that apart anyway. That screw is quite tight. It's also got a lot of green on it. Don't 
two screws at this end of the top cover. These screws are chrome plated brass so they're easily mutilated if you use a damaged screwdriver or your technique's bad or both. So there's my top cover. All the glass and that's a bit grimy. will certainly need to be stripped down and cleaned. But otherwise it looks quite tidy. The exposure meter. One screw at the end here. And one screw down here. Take that off. I'll recover those screws. They can go through the cleaner the meter to one side. Shutter release button off the top. Film release button. Take the return spring from that. Put that carefully to one side. What have we got? Well, this is a not one of the earliest three C's because it has the chrome trim plates. The early ones just had uh, polished alloy edges up on the body. I'll just take this strap lug and screws off. Range finder can come off. Screw was quite tight. So was that. Put the range finder to one side. Just take that screw out of that strap and take the post for the film rewind button off. Now the tool I use to do that is a screwdriver. There's a shim washer under there, I'll recover that. Screwdriver that was cut off short, drilled down the middle to give clearance for that post and a slot cut across the end to engage the flats on that post. Nice simple tool. If you've got access to a lathe or something, it's a great thing to make. It doesn't need to be a wonderful quality of screwdriver. You certainly wouldn't want one that was going to be too hard to machine. Get this screw out of the strap lug. And fish that back out from where it came. The cocking rack. Alright, let's have a look at this. It's difficult to judge exactly how good or bad these are until when they haven't been cleaned yet. See the grease is quite dry on that one. That chrome trim plate can come off. Let's take the film rewind apart. Cover the screws from that and take this apart. The collar and take the inner sharp out of the outer. Okay, let's carry on a bit more. Take this screw off the top of the film advance. Again, that's a modified screwdriver. You can see that I've just cut away that to leave two points. the gear off the top, there's the washer and this drive dog assembly drives the film advance from the action that being part of it. Now this grease is quite sticky stuff is sticking to the tools now two screws here this screw it's got a shoulder on the top that supports the shutter cocking rack, keeps it from keeps it in firm contact with the gear on the top of the film advance. At least that's the intention. If the screws are loose um, or the bush on the film advance is unusually worn, then you end up with the teeth on the rack and teeth on the gear only engaging at the very tips. 
and that's usually followed by catastrophic failure. Just remove that screw from the film release button, film release shaft, cover the screw and the spring. Take out now the shutter release in this case. Some of them have a spring down in here, this one doesn't. That's nothing to be alarmed about. Some of them had springs, some of them didn't. A spring in that position was something that came and went over production time. It was there in the earliest models, then it went away and was replaced by something else. And then it came back and there were both springs in place. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the top of the camera at the base. That leatherette has got a really odd lumpy look to it. It's... I don't know what's going on there. I'll remove these two screws from the back catch cover. Tripod socket surround. And separate those pieces. Someone's been in here, and I, how I can tell is because this leatherette has a grain to it. There's a gr the, the pattern has a grain, if you like, and, and the cloth underneath it, the cloth that the leatherette's made from, has a grain. And the grain on that rewipe, that advanced knob, running at that angle instead of that angle. So it tells me someone's had it off and they've glued it back and they've put it anywhere they liked. The leatherette's in quite good condition. It's complete. Looks a bit dry, it's a little bit cracked. Might not have liked the adhesive that had been used on that, but it's, it's intact. It's good. Means we'll be able to use it. Three screws hold the film advance lever in place. And that was the spring on the film advance running down rapidly. Yeah. That leatherette's unusually shiny around here. I'm not sure what's going on there. And will the leatherette peel up nicely or will it fight? Because we know someone had the film advance lever off, it's fairly likely that they've had the base trim off. Most likely someone's been in to do some repair to the film advance shaft. It's making a crackling noise as it peels off. That means that the adhesive is brittle and it's, it's cracking. It appears to be stuck more firmly at this end. Now it's cracked there. I have to work around that. Yeah, there's a patch just here where it's stuck very firmly. It may come off in two pieces. Uh, yeah, it did. I've got a hole in the middle. And here's the fleck from the hole, which did come loose. 
but it didn't lift off with it. It's okay, we'll deal with that. That'll be pretty much invisible once that goes back on. It'll be a bit more difficult if the piece that broke away was missing. That screw doesn't want to move. Now the screws here, you can see the screws here are brown. That's rust. It possibly means that the camera has been put down on a wet surface at some time. That's not an uncommon practice. It could be a table with drinks spilt on it. It could have been the concrete beside the pool. Let's have another go at this screw. And that doesn't want to move. I'm going to have to um, hit that with a hammer. Hold on tight, you're going to jump. That was it. Screws off, their chrome trimmers off. We can lift out the release lever. I'll recover the spring from that now so that it doesn't get damaged. The spring is a little bit misshapen, nothing too dramatic. The lock lever, that can come out. Alright, the rewind button I think can come off next. So I'll hold my thumb on the sprocket shaft. I'm just rolling the sprocket shaft with my thumb while I hold the button firmly with the pliers. Now I just sorted pieces into the wrong container there, so let me get that back. The rewind button catch. We'll just unhook the spring from that. Some of these screws are unusually tight or corroded in, others are not. Yeah, with that, let's recover the three screws. And that all goes into the cleaner. I'm just checking the state of this. There's virtually no grease on here, or the grease is dried right out. Close that front. Now I'm just going to remove the screw that holds the sprocket to the sprocket shaft. Take the shaft out, there's our sprocket, this fell out, this is our top bush from the film advance, this is the clutch that I've just pulled apart, the take up spool comes out, I'm going to clean that metal bush, the plastic take up spool I'll clean manually. What else do we want off here? Tripod socket. The screws on for these are often loose. This one there doesn't appear to be loose. That's just the little uh, bush that the film cassette would sit into. Okay, we'll take apart the front now. I'm going to take out the hinge pins for the front door. They're just screws top and bottom. Both of them were tight. 
and there may or may not be washers in those positions. Yes, there was at the bottom. To recover that. Those washers just take any rattle out of the door. Stop the door from going to rattle up and down. Okay. It all looks okay. I'll just take this piece off. This ring locates the shutter, stops it rotating in the mount. It also has an arm attached to it, a hinged arm that couples to the rangefinder by this means of this screw, this boss that the, runs on the rangefinder. And we'll just wriggle this out. There's that hinged arm. The film uh, the sh here, I'm looking at the state of this. I need to mark the position of my focus scale ring with the outer helical, the bright part, and mark the inner and outer helical together so that I know the relative alignment of those pieces so that things go back where they came from. So I'm just checking, just moving things to the inner and outer helical are sitting at the same height. In other words, a dead level with each other. I'm going to scribe an alignment mark across there. And there. I'll put two marks through at the bottom. One mark through at the top, then I can take the screws out because I know where things will be. That just ensures that, as in the normal case, that the focus would have been correct before I took it apart. The focus will be correct if I put it back together again. I'll take two screws out of this shroud here for the gear. Now these are chrome plated brass, fairly vulnerable if you make a mess of one. Put the ugly one down in this position where it can't be seen, keep the pretty one for up there. The black screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. That one was loose. That one was a bit loose. If these screws get loose and they back out completely, they can block the action of the uh, focus scale ring. And you can get into a situation where you don't seem to be able to adjust the focus. Recovering all these screws, these four small ones I'm taking off here at the moment hold this retaining ring in place. Let's get those four black screws out. They hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. The four nickel plated screws here, the round head ones, they hold the focus mount to the front standard. Recover them. Everything here is sticky with grease. Take the focus helical apart. Take it out of the mount. Here's the inner and outer. They're unusually loose. There's not much grease in there at all. Alright, to take this shroud out of the body, we've got two screws at the top, two at the bottom. These ones, as previously noted, are a bit rusty. They may decide they don't want to come out. 
They're all tight. That one's not. Have that out. So, hold on tight. Earthquake's coming. Sharp tap while um, keeping some torque on that screwdriver is usually all that's required. Now the felt on the back of this is stuck to that front, the back of the bellows. It'll just have to be glued down in place. Well, looking in here, I can see the sand and stuff in that dirty old grease. This screw at the top holds the bracket that keeps in the shaft that takes the action from the cocking rack through to the front of the camera. So that needs to come out. Well, that's the body strip down. Pop that to one side. Here we go. Let's take this front apart. So if I depress this so I can pull out that little sleeve. Holding the two buttons, slide the whole lot through the back, making sure the buttons don't escape. The button, there's the springs for our buttons. There's our buttons for top and bottom. And here we have the shutter release component. I'll just retrieve that return spring. Remove these two screws. For these pieces, I need to clean manually. This chrome trim plate from the base of the camera, I want to get all that adhesive off there. And the chrome plate from the top trim, that's pretty good anyway. I'll throw that through the cleaner at a later part of the process. And this is my pile of screws and components to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll do all that, but I wanted to look at this. Now the leatherette on the back I thought was suspicious. They had a couple of bumps. They're not particularly pronounced. But the leatherette is loose at the end here. So I have to decide whether I want to strip that off completely and re-glue it in its entirety or whether I'm better just to clean out underneath this end here where it's loose. Now this is on over the top of the chrome plated brass hinge. It's not uncommon for the adhesive to uh, not stick in the same fashion to the aluminium as it does to the chrome plated brass. And I've got my two pieces of leatherette here at the front of the camera which I'm even less enthusiastic about lifting off. And they look to be quite sound so I don't think I'm going to push my luck with this one. I think I will clean out under here with a bit of naphtha and then re-glue that and put that back. I think the other leatherettes I'll leave undisturbed. I want this old leatherette and rubbish and glue off the base here. That will probably scrape off. Yeah, it does. Just using the, the back of my scalpel blade there. Now that's a combination of adhesive and some of the fabric from the leatherette. Of course it's had two lots of adhesive on there. From the original manufacture and from whenever it was serviced. Um, the leatherette may or may not. The leatherette may only have one layer of adhesive because 
if it had gone back to, uh, particularly if it went back to one of the Kodak service centres at the time, unless the leatherettes came off very easily, you know, they, they, they were sacrificed. There was none, no mucking around. The leatherette didn't want to come off easily, it was sacrificed, and new leatherette would be fitted. So there was always constant visits to the other end of the workshop to get parts from the, the parts bins. And I've got no idea now at this late stage whether the parts were expensive or cheap. But they were part and parcel of the job. And a lucky old customer may be paying. I can't afford to lose any leatherettes at this late stage because they haven't made new ones in probably 60 years. Okay. So far so good. I'll clean up some of this stuff. And then we'll get into the actual repairs, well the rebuild really. I don't think there's really much broken here. <laughs> 